So this afternoon, CDC officials will hold an emergency meeting to review reports of severe blood clots found in women who received the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. This comes after six women suffered from rare blood clots just days after receiving the single dose shot. Over 7 million people, though, have already received the J&J vaccine so far. And these latest developments have sparked concerns among women taking hormonal birth control pills, which can also cause a different type of blood clot. So with more on this, we want to bring in Dr. Jessica Shepard. She is an OBGYN and the chief medical officer at Very Well Health. Uh, Jessica, really good to see you again, of course. Um, so let's sort of dig into this. Um, what are you telling your patients? I'm sure you're hearing from people who are concerned um, about maybe they've already received the Johnson & Johnson vaccine or, you know, for some people that was the preferred vaccine because it's a, a single shot dose. What are you telling them about its safety? Well, when we think about safety with the J&J &J vaccine, this is exactly why we have vaccine reporting after receiving the vaccine and monitoring those side effects so that we can know of any side effects such as this one. Now, when we look at blood clots, especially when we look at the number that were affected, which were six outcomes, we know that the amount of J&J &J vaccines that... This number is relatively low when you look at the population from an epidemiology standpoint. With that being said, it is still very important that we take these cases and look at the cause in order to make sure that now we watch for this in the future. Because one of the things that was realized with this particular clot, which was rare, is that actually the treatment for this clot is not typically what you would use for clots when we think of treatment in the medical community. So, doctor, um, I guess the question that will have people wondering um, is when something like this happens and the numbers are so low, six people out of more than seven million, um, is it typical that health officials in this country would decide to pause or even halt vaccination efforts um, as opposed to continuing to vaccinate people but to study the results in much the same way that you would that they are going to do now um, because again one of the concerns I think from some folks is that there's already a very well entrenched group of people in this country that are vaccine hesitant and now this sort of adds to that. Exactly correct. So when you have vaccine hesitancy and people who are reluctant to get the vaccine this is why we take a step back to look at exactly what it is that we can give validity to while still we have other vaccines that we can continue to vaccinate the rest of the country. Now, this does not mean that J&J &J is not going to come back on the market. We, again, have a substantial amount of people who have received the vaccine, and these are things that we can look for in the future. But again, these are the kind of reactions that the FDA and the CDC should take responsibility for to actually reassure the public because what we want to do is decrease misinformation and vaccine hesitancy. And this is one of the ways that we can do that. What about pregnant women? When do you recommend that pregnant women be vaccinated for COVID? Now, again, we're going to follow those same recommendations for vaccination and pregnancy. Now, I know there is some concern when you think of a clot and reproductive uh, reproductive age or fertility in women, um, mm -hmm. especially because that's who was impacted with this particular outcome, is that we still want pregnant women to get vaccinated. There is no perfect time. If you do have time to wait, you might want to wait outside of the first trimester. But again, these are discussions that we would want women to have with their OBGYNs. But the recommendation still says the same, is that there is no reason why a pregnant woman should not be able to get a vaccine. Now, going towards clots, we know that pregnancy actually itself, even outside of the vaccine, is still a cause for an increased risk of a clot, and much more so than you would see with the numbers that we saw here with the J&J &J clot formation of the six women. So, Doctor, are you probably aware that the White House has declared this week Black Maternal Health Week. Uh, Vice President Kamala Harris hosted a roundtable yesterday. She said the reason this country is facing a maternal health crisis is because of, because of systemic racial inequities and implicit bias. Uh, explain that to our viewers and what doctors can do right now to change this reality. 
Yeah, that is very exciting to hear that that was uh, deemed this week. Now, Black Maternal Health Week has been something that has been four years, but now that the White House has taken the stance in order to place importance on Black maternal health is outstanding. Now, as an OBGYN myself and a woman of color, this is especially important because when we think of maternal mortality rates, we know that as a Black woman, they are three to four times more likely to die in pregnancy than any other race. Now, these statistics are outstanding and significant because we know that there is racism and we know that there's uh, bias in healthcare. So as a physician, I think that we need to take this seriously because we still find that there are reasons in healthcare preventable reasons that we can take part in in order to have black women not dying at such a, such a substantial number. All right, Dr. Jessica Shepard, thank you very much. We appreciate it. Thank you so much.